this is not going to be a surprise for those of you who are building applications using large language models. But number one issue that I'm seeing when working with companies are hallucinations. So it's just we cannot trust what comes out of LLMs. That's it's just a fact, right? So it's fine to create a demo. As soon as you try to do something consistently multiple multiple times, you're going to start seeing problems. So uh, what I want to show you today is, is one idea that you can immediately take advantage of to reduce hallucinations, okay? And there are trade-offs. We're going to talk about that. So I'm going to show you the idea. Hopefully, you get uh, how to implement it. And then I'm going to show you a tool where you can do it all automatically for you, which is super, super cool, okay? So uh, this, uh, what you have here on the screen, is my poor attempt to draw like a regular let's use an LLM approach, right? So you get a query right here. We send that query to the LLM, and then we get back a response, and that response is what we use to, you know, to inform a customer or to take an action or whatever that is. And obviously, if we do this, which is very simple, we are uh, opening ourselves to the possibility of this response to be incorrect. And when that happens, uh, we're just going to be making a mistake, and that's not acceptable. So we can extend this workflow. We can make it a little bit more complex by adding a second LLM that I'm going to call the LLM Challenger, OK? So now the, the, the workflow became a little bit more difficult, but this is the way it's going to work. Now we get the query from the user or whatever query we want to run. We send it to the LLM. That LLM is going to give us a partial response. And when I say partial, I don't mean like it's shorter in length. What I mean is uh, a pre-response. But we are not sure whether that response is correct or not. So we're going to take that response. We're going to take the original query. And we're going to use a second LLM. And we're going to ask that second LLM to evaluate whether that response is correct for that query, OK? And that will get us the final response, the one that we're going to you know, take action on. If the second LLM says, yes, that response is correct, now we have like a second opinion, OK? So this is the whole idea of an LLM challenger, getting a second opinion on an answer, right? If the LLM 2 says, no, no, we can take a different action, for example, we can involve a human to have that human take an action on those samples where both LLMs do not uh, agree on an answer. OK, so uh, theoretical speaking, this should be pretty simple to understand. Uh, let me show you here uh, what, I, what you're seeing here on my screen right now is unstruct. By the way, you can run unstruct for free on your, uh, it's it's open source, you, you can run it. Here I'm running their, their cloud version. Uh, and there is a demo here, which is about uh, processing uh, receipts, right? So like, you know, you, you, you take, you go to a restaurant, um, they give you a receipt at the end of, of your meal and you take a picture of it. And now I want to process all of those receipts. Uh, I have them in a folder, I want to process them and basically create structured data out of those pictures. So as you can see here, actually, let me open that receipt uh, in you know bigger way here. This is a meal I had last week, a couple of weeks ago. I think it was last week, actually. Uh, it was amazing. It was in Gainesville. Uh, you know, the restaurant is called Momoyaki. It's huge. It was nice. Um, you can see, you know, I paid $56.11 total. The meal, the amount was 46. I left a 20% tip. Uh, so yeah, that's my signature. So imagine a folder with receipts like this. OK, so I have many of them. So what I have here in Unstract is Prompt Studio. And Prompt Studio is where you can configure an LLM to do different things. So look at this. It's very simple. Uh, for a receipt, I'm going to be getting the name of the vendor. So notice the prompt says, what's the name of the merchant or vendor? OK, and GPT-40 is going to be the one trying to answer that. And I have the value of the receipt. What's the total value of the receipt? So you can configure 
uh, a bunch of different prompts that are going to be executed by different models if you want to, in order to process a single piece of information, in this case, is one picture of a receipt. So if there are things that are harder to do on a receipt, I could use maybe a better model. If there are things that are easier, I'm going to use like a smaller model just to, to, to save on costs and, and gain on speed. So I'm getting the name of the vendor, the receipt value, the tax amount, and the tip amount I'm getting out of the receipt. And as you can see, the output here of, of executing this will be a JSON object that's going to look like this, right? Receipt category. And this category will be guessed based on the information on the receipt. Like, for example, food. The name of the vendor will be Momoyaki for this particular receipt. The receipt value is $56.11. The taxed amount is zero because it was food. It's not taxed here in Florida. And the tip amount was $9.35. Okay, so this is an example of what I would get out of one res uh, receipt. And obviously, I can have like multiple receipts in that. This is Carmela. Uh, this is another, uh, this is my receipt as well. And this is just a, you know, a coffee shop that I went to. And, you know, same data is going to be here. So now that I have this here in Prompt Studio, I created a workflow that is going to grab all of the images from a source location. And as you saw, those images are going to be living here in Google Drive. So I'm going to grab all of the images from this folder and process them using the Prompt Studio that I created. Now, notice that here for this, when I selected this component, which is the Prompt Studio component, I'm enabling the LLM challenge, OK? And I'm selecting the O3 Mini as the Challenger LLM. So in this diagram here, this second LLM will be O3 Mini. So everything that's going to be happening is the Prompt Studio specifies that GPT-4 will be the one extracting the information from the receipt. And each one of those fields will be challenged using O3 Mini. Obviously, the trade-off here is, well, we're going to have to pay more. Right, because we are taking every field and sending it to, through two LLMs instead of sending it through a single LLM. So it's going to cost us more and it's going to be slower the process. That's the downside. The upside is that it's going to be really, really difficult for hallucinations to sneak through. So the quality of the output will be huge. By the way, everything that I'm showing you here you can also do using the Unstruct API. So you can create a workflow just like this to process data and to use LLM uh, uh, Challenger LLM while processing all of that data. And here you can also enable human in the loop tasks. Basically, if you find an LLM or uh, the Challenger LLM finds a mistake, then you can involve a human to solve those uh, contradictions. So. Anyway, I'm not going to run it right here because I already did, but I can go here to this button and run this workflow. And what's going to happen is that the workflow is going to grab all of the data sitting in this folder. It's going to process all of that data and it's going to generate outputs. OK, and the outputs are precisely what you imagine. So here is the output folder with both images here. I opened one of them. I run this off camera here. I opened one of them because I want you to see precisely uh, the type of information that you're going to get back from this workflow. All right. So, for example, here you get uh, this is an extraction run. So, this is the GPT 4.0, which is the original model. And the original model is returning Momoyaki from the receipt. OK, so that's the extraction run. And then you get the challenger run. You can see here the type. This is the challenge. And this, the feedback is the student correctly extracted the merger. The student here would be uh, basically GPT-4.0. Uh, the student correctly extracted the merger name Momoyaki as provided in the document. So he's giving it a score of five, and he's saying that the status is success. So in this particular case, both LLMs agree on the answer. So I'm having that second set of eyes 
checking every single response that comes from my LLM. So this is the second one, GPT-4.0. The result was food. The challenger says the answer food aligns well with the receipts context. Momoyaki suggests a restaurant setting, making the food category the most appropriate selection. Okay, same thing. This is a success. And let's just check another one. In this case, GPT-4.0, the result was 56.11. That's the total amount of, of money, uh, obviously, of the, re uh, the receipt. And all three minutes says the student correctly extracted the total value of the receipt as $56.11 from the document. And again, this is success. This information is exactly what you will get as part of the API when you're using it. If in this case, there are no, oh, look at this. Actually, look at this one here. Look at this. It says, uh, in this particular case, the tax amount, GPT-4.0 says is zero, okay? And then it says the receipt does not mention any taxed amount or GST. The student's answer of zero is an assumption rather than an extraction from the provided text, which does not contain any information about tax amount. A more accurate response would have indicated that no tax amount is present. Okay, so this is an interesting one. The tax amount is indeed zero. It's food. Therefore, because it's not taxed in Florida, and I did not ask for, uh, a, you know, alcoholic be beverage, the tax amount is zero. But the O3 mini here is right. There is nothing in the receipt that indicates that. So this is just an assumption. In this particular case, it, the status is that it failed because both of these two models do not agree. This is a perfect opportunity for us to improve the prompt that we're using with GPT-4 and explaining and telling GPT-4 that in the case there is no tax amount present, then to use 0.0. .0. And in that particular case, O3 Mini will see that as part of the prompt and then it will realize that this is exactly what it should have been, uh, you know, the correct answer. So. This is the type of information that you get from Unstract. I'm going to leave a link to the Unstract GitHub repository somewhere below, so you check it out. But this uh, improvement to your workflows, even though you're gonna be paying more and just sort of sacrificing a little bit of speed and cost, it will definitely decrease the amount of hallucinations that you suffer. So keep building software, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.